I wake up, or is it waking up? Nothing feels like it usually does. The shock when I notice that my arm is stuck under the not very charming man from the party last night is impossible to explain. He is naked, and so am I. But I hardly have the time to realize that these horrible facts are true before I notice that the person I thought was my friend, a friend since five years, is on top of me trying to penetrate me. I push him away hard. I don't remember his reaction. I only remember that both of them put the clothes on and left. Exactly what happened last night. I would never say yes to have sex with any of them. But the stains on my body and in my bed tells me in a painful way that that is what happened several times. It is four o'clock in the morning. I don't remember anything. Did I even leave the apartment? I hug my pillow and tears starts falling. The memories from the rape when I was 19 years old pops up in my head. That is 14 years ago and one of the worst incidents in my life. This happened nine and a half years ago. My memory is still blank. I lost six hours of my life. The last thing that I remember is that I was at a party in my own home with some friends. When one of them, let's call him X, he doesn't deserve to have a proper name, calls me from the kitchen and asks me to taste the drink. The drink he gave me hardly changed my behavior at all, so I went out to a club with my friends like we planned. It was like the drug <clears throat> switched off my brain, but my body was still working. I kind of interviewed everyone that was at my party that night, and people my friends told me that I'd been talking to at the club, but none of the stories brought any memory back. Can you imagine a worse situation? Try to imagine that people have been using your body as they felt like, and that one of them was your friend. The rape scattered my life completely. I couldn't stand being in my body or my home, and yet the boy in my hometown felt horrible to live in. Too many bars, cafes, restaurants, all the places X and I had been to together reminded me of the rape. And even worse for a person like me who loves meeting new people. I didn't know how to trust anybody. It was too obvious that my gut feeling was untrustworthy. It felt like I was living my life in an invisible prison, and it felt that way for a long time. It took almost six months until I felt happy for the first time, and it took more than three years until I felt like myself again. When I started feeling okay, I decided to travel alone to India. The trip would be like my final exam. If I made it, I was definitely back on track again. One of the worst things with being scared of X was that it was hard for me to do things alone. That is the main reason why I choose this way to celebrate. I will never ever forget the feeling I had on that plane. Tears in a mix of joy and relief fell almost the whole flight. And when I stood up to go off the plane, I felt stronger and happier than ever. It was like I had grown several centimeters. I was more upright, my steps were lighter, and the happy twinkles in my eyes were more intense than ever. I was myself again. I got top grade in my exam. Four years later, <clears throat> I walk into the food store in my new hometown, Stockholm. It is a few minutes before closing time, so I walk quickly through the store to get a packet of milk. Suddenly, X shows up in front of me. The shock almost made me freeze. 
but I somehow manage to keep moving. I get the milk and hurry to check out. When I'm waiting for the only person before me, someone is knocking me on my shoulder. It is him. I ignore him, pay, and run out into the street. What do I do now? It feels like his appearance pushed me back to square one in the blink of an eye. I don't dare to go home. I don't know where to hide. When I finally dare to go home and close the door in the elevator behind me, I get eye contact with myself in the mirror. The horror I've seen too many times is back in my eyes. This incident planted a seed of an idea that I want to use my history to help others. The seed kept growing, and one Sunday night when I was going to bed, it hit me out of nowhere that I was going to start my own company and work with this. The thought just kept coming, and it was impossible for me to, to, to sleep. As I went out into the kitchen, put on some coffee, and started writing. And I sat there almost the whole night until it was time to take a shower and go to work. The week after that, I resigned and started work, re resigned from my work and started writing on my book. The feeling was too strong to resist. This was something I had to do, had to do in an extremely positive way. I have, as I'm sure you can imagine, a lot of ideas. All of them are based on positive thinking and care for other people. I strongly believe that no sane person wants to have memories from a rape, neither as a victim nor as a rapist. I have a lot of dreams when it comes to this, but the two huge ones are to decrease the number of sexual abuses and to move the shame from the victim to the rapist. I'm focusing on two different things to work towards these huge goals. The first is to meet young boys. Almost all sexual abuses are done by men, so I think that it's very important to meet young boys who are self-educated in sex from the internet and talk about the differences between porn and ordinary sex. I want to meet them in small groups and make them understand how sexual abuses affect lives before they do something they will regret for the rest of their lives. I talk about sex in a positive way. My message is that sex is one of the best things there is, as long as everyone feels desire for each other. The second thing that I'm focusing on <clears throat> is to try to inspire young people with a history similar to mine to keep fighting. My message in a non-diminishing way is that they can do it when I could. And I'm sharing a lot of advices from my own life. I think that it's very important to do things and not just keep thinking about what happened over and over again. I try to convince people that life is always worth living, even when it doesn't feel like it. After a hard struggle with life, you will feel more confident and happy than you did before. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, an old cliche that is true. To never ever give up and always focus on the bright spots in life are the basic rules in my life. A very easy way to appreciate life every day is to always figure out the day's three best things before you fall asleep. I promise you that there isn't one single day in your life without three positive things. A miserable day, it could be that you had an apple that tasted okay, that you saw the sun for a second, that you managed to leave bed for 10 minutes, Things you wouldn't even notice a good day, but focusing on them made the day a bit better, and that's even more important, a really bad day. I call my project <coughs> Tillsammans, together in Swedish, for two reasons. 
The first is that we together need to agree before we have sex. The second is that we need to do this together to be able to make a big change when it comes to the number of sexual abuses. It doesn't matter how hard I work for this if you don't care. One of the best together feelings I have had so far was when the crowdfunding I did to kickstart the sales of my book ended on 102,501 Swedish crowns. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Everyone could easily join in because you could give from, nio, from nine <laughs> crowns, uh, and that is the way I always want to do things. I think it's very important to understand that you can con contribute, uh, um, even if you can't contribute with a huge thing, you can always help. Just thinking about how you talk and act in front of kids sounds like a very small thing, can make, make, but can make a very big change. Since I released my book at Bokmässan here in Gothenburg one and a half months ago, a lot of positive things have been happening, including the crowdfunding. I've been working so hard for this for about a year, and the feeling I have right now is amazing. I released a competition to find a new word for voltekt, the Swedish word for rape. The new word will show in a clear way that the rape is always a rape, even if the rapist didn't use violence. I've started a collaboration with a home for young girls with a history similar to mine, and I started a collaboration with a football, uh, with a soccer club, uh, to try to meet as many young boys as possible. And I've done a lot of interviews for different papers and TV. And today I'm here. This is my first time ever on a stage. And TED Talks... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, thank you. So this is a very proud moment for me. Trying to help others this way is the most important thing I've ever done. And it's amazing that my horrible history can help others. I received a lot of emails the last month from people who heard or read about me. And many of them told me that they finally dare to tell their own story because they feel encouraged by me. Others, both victims, and people who wants to try to help a victim told me that my book helped them in many different ways. Could it be better? I for sure doubt it. Thank you. Thank you.